his presence shall come greetings. Whereas it is expedient and necessary that a competent person should reside in Bastyr, the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, on my behalf in order to represent Indonesian interests, and whereas I repose special trust and confidence in the integrity, fidelity, and ability of a Mr. Farron Tennyson Lawrence. I do hereby appoint Mr. Farron Tennyson Lawrence as Honorary Consul of the Republic of Indonesia in Bastyr, the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. I do hereby enjoin all citizens of the Republic of Indonesia to acknowledge and consider him accordingly. And I hereby request the government of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis and all authorities whom it may concern to acknowledge him as Honorary Consul of the Republic of Indonesia and to admit him fully and peacefully to exercise the duties of a said office. Done at Jakarta, under the seal of the President of the Republic of Indonesia, this 13th day of May in the year 2019. President of the Republic of Indonesia, Joko Widodo. First of all, I would like to express my most sincere appreciation and gratitude to Your Excellency, Mr. Mark Branley, and all of you for your presence here to witness today that Mr. Farron Tennyson Lawrence has been taking oath to, the, to be the first honorary consul of the Republic of Indonesia in Pasteur, the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. <laughs> On behalf of my president, Joko Widodo, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia, Ratno Marsudi, I have the honor to convey to you, Mr. Lawrence, their warm felicitations and also our wholehearted congratulations on your appointment as the Honorary Consul of the Republic of Indonesia to this beautiful and blessed country. From now on, Mr. Lawrence will be representing and promoting the interest of Indonesia in this country to represent the interest of the biggest archipelagic country in the world with 17,508 islands and 267 million people, the third biggest democracy and the 14th economy in the world, the principal player in the Southeast Asian region, member of various multilateral organizations, including G20. Mr. Lawrence's duty is to serve as a bridge not only to connect between the two ends, namely the interest of our two countries, Indonesia and St. Kitts and Nevis, but also to make the two ends would create mutual benefits from each other. The relation between St. Kitts and Nevis and Indonesia are relatively young, commenced since the 30th January of 2014, but we have been moving forward very constantly Visa are free for both citizens of our two countries to visit each other will serve as a very vital facilitation to strengthen our people-to-people -people contact. We have to take the advantage of this facilitation and we need to get rid of the perception that we are geographically distant. My government has full confidence that Mr. Lawrence is capable of serving the interest of Indonesia and under the coordination of the Indonesian Embassy in Bogota, he will help me more strengthen the relations between Indonesia and St. Kitts and Nevis. My government has also full confidence, as well as its profound gratitude, that the government of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis would admit, facilitate, and support Mr. Lawrence to exercise his duty as the Honorary Consul of the Republic of Indonesia to this beautiful country. We are proud of you, Mr. Lawrence, and be proud of repre representing Indonesia. Once again, big congratulations on this appointment, and we wish you big success in your endeavor in the future for the benefit and prosperity of our two peoples and countries, Indonesia and the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. Thank you very much. I stand before you here this morning, deeply honored to be named Honorary Consul of the Republic of Indonesia to the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. 
my sincerest thanks to the government and people of the Republic of Indonesia through His Excellency Ambassador Prio Aswanto for recommending and appointing me to serve as their representative as honorary consul here in St. Kitts and Nevis. Equally, I wish to express my appreciation and thanks to the government of St. Kitts and Nevis through the Honorable Mark Brantley, Minister of Foreign Affairs, for approving my appointment to this esteemed office. Thank you, sir. I say a very special thanks also to Ms. Bass, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and her very capable staff. And I must make special mention of Ms. Chanel Simmons and Mr. Samuel Berridge, all of whom provided me invaluable support and guidance from the point of my being recommended to where we are in the process here today. The world is heading in the direction where honorary consuls are rising in numbers and importance. In many cases, this is as a result of scarce funding at the state level for foreign affairs. Thus, increasingly, countries across the world, large and small, are becoming more and more committed to the honorary council system. Rapid global integration has brought about extensive worldwide traveling by not just government officials and business people, but also by the average private citizen. Thus, what we are seeing today is citizens from countries like the Republic of Indonesia, like the Republic of Indonesia visiting faraway places like our Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, and in many cases, residing here. This reality urges the state to build a support system for its citizens that works across the globe. Indeed, I see one of my roles as to guide Indonesian visitors and residents with St. Kitts and Nevis's provisions and rules, including health, immigration, and passport issues. As a result of globalization in international trade, Indonesian and St. Kitts and Nevis businesses actively and progressively seek to export their goods and services to foreign states. Thus, having a consul for exploring and marketing the possibilities of trading with each other is extremely important. I saw this, first, I saw this firsthand when I visited the Republic of Indonesia a year ago to attend a trade show. I was impressed with the wide array of, small, of new small businesses many owned by young women who engaged me on the possibility of finding a market in St. Kitts and Nevis for their goods and services. My own assessment at the time clearly pointed to enormous mutually beneficial opportunities that exist. Armed with that experience, combined with the warmth and kindness of the people and the natural beauty of the country, when the opportunity presented itself for me to serve as honorary counsel, Needless to say, I welcomed and embraced it. As Honorary Council, I am expected to represent the government of the Republic of Indonesia here in St. Kitts and Nevis, acting to assist and protect its citizens here and to facilitate trade and friendship between the people of both countries. I see my role as to be informed about the cultural, commercial, and political situations of both countries and have the Council be the instrument through which that information is shared and utilized for better relations between our countries. Further, I am to promote the alliance between the Republic of Indonesia and the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis by my efforts to bind them via successful trade agreements that will also promote business, culture, tourism, commerce, and science affairs. I wish to hear expressed to the government of the Republic of Indonesia through Ambassador Aswanto that I am committed to perform these functions and roles as the Honorary Council of the Republic of Indonesia with pride, integrity, zeal, and to the best of my abilities. Thank you. I am delighted, Ambassador, that we have got to this stage. We entered into formal diplomatic relations only in 2014. But in the five years since then, our relationship has matured and it has progressed very quickly. Some significant milestones have been achieved in this relationship.
Indonesia, one of the largest countries in the world, most significant country, one of the most significant countries in Southeast Asia, has said they come forward to partner with a very small country of St. Kitts and Nevis. And we have, for example, been able to extend visa-free access to all of our citizens so that the people of Indonesia can visit us and that we can visit the people of Indonesia freely. And I believe that that, in large measure, was due to the energy and commitment excellency that you brought. And so I thank you for that. I think the people of St. Kitts and Nevis thank you for that. And that has been a very significant development for us, which we hope will yield results in terms of tourism, in terms of people-to-people -people contact as we move forward. <laughs> Our relationship has not ended there. I think, again, through the efforts of His Excellency, we have been able to procure a scholarship to study batik. Many people will not know, but if you don't know, I'm telling you that Indonesia is the home of batik. This is where it all originates. And so even here we have Caribel Batik that does quite well. And I am sure that there is some connection with Indonesia because that is where this came from. And so when His Excellency arranged initially some local workshops for Batik and for people who were interested, and the turnout was quite good, both in Nevis and in St. Kitts. And we were able to select a young woman from Nevis who went off and spent a year in Indonesia studying batik. I'm very proud to say that she's back. She had a wonderful time, Excellency, there. She said that your people treated her well. And now that she's back, I'm very proud to say that she herself now is training others in the art of batik. And this is what we talk about when we talk about the transfer of skills. And so I would want to thank you again for that very, very good initiative and development. We look forward certainly to more of our people being exposed to Indonesia, to training, whether in Batik or otherwise, to scholarships. And we are certain that through the efforts of your new honorary consul here, your man on the ground, that more of this will in fact happen. We are also grateful that through the efforts of His Excellency, we were able to participate in the Archipelagic States and Island States Forum in Indonesia. Again, I believe this was last year when we were able to attend. And again, through the efforts of His Excellency and through the help of the Indonesian government, St. Kitts and Nevis was well represented there. This opening today, this inauguration of your consulate, your honorary consulate here, is for us very significant. Why is it significant? It is significant because it marks yet again the journey on which we have embarked, a further step on that journey. It is significant because I'm told that other than Trinidad and Tobago, this is the only other in the entire Caribbean, and certainly the first in the Eastern Caribbean, that the Republic of Indonesia is opening such a presence. It is tangible evidence of the strides that we have made thus far. And it is tangible evidence of the commitment, both on the part of the Republic of Indonesia and on the part of the government of St. Kitts and Nevis, to strengthen and deepen this relationship that is only five years old, but seems much older. And so, Excellency, I would want to thank you for this excellent initiative today. I can't end, however, without congratulating Farron Lawrence, our new consul, honorary consul of the Republic of Indonesia to St. Kitts and Nevis. Mr. Lawrence expressed an interest some time ago, and certainly when Your Excellency proposed him as your person, I thought you had found the right person. And here we are today, I would think that the records would suggest that we agreed with some alacrity. There was no delay on our part because we wanted to advance this relationship. We thought you had found the right person, someone who's young, committed, energetic, a businessman of some renown, and someone we thought could advance the interests of the Republic of Indonesia right here in St. Kitts and Nevis. We are absolutely delighted that we have come to this point and that as of today, the Republic of Indonesia has a physical presence and someone on the ground who can represent their interests, interact with their citizens, provide counsel and advice, but also interact with us as the government to get messages to you quickly, Excellency, all the way in Bogota, and to ensure that this relationship that we have embarked upon continues and develops from strength to strength. So Mr. Lawrence, I want to congratulate you and to say to you that we look forward to working with you. I'm happy that you already have established a working relationship with the technocrats at 
the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and we certainly look forward to answering your questions and to advance in this relationship. I will warn you that we are on a path here of speed and results, and that is what we are going to expect. If His Excellency could give us results all the way from Bogota, we expect big results from you right here in Bastia. I would like to end, ladies and gentlemen, by committing our continued support to the Republic of Indonesia. To say to you, Excellency, and to your Honorary Consul that Sinkis and Nevis has been a friend and that we will continue to be a friend. We recognize that from time to time our support is necessary in international forums, many of which we are both members. And we continue to pledge our commitment to support mutual causes for our mutual benefit in the international community. We welcome the role of Indonesia, the leadership role, not only in South Asia, but in the world. And we look forward, certainly, to working with you. And we think, again, that it is significant that a country of your size would find it useful to you to partner with a country of our size. It's the giant and the midget in every sense because you're a great country, a big country, and we are the tiniest of countries in the Western Hemisphere. And that, to my mind, and I think that's the message we need to get, that it demonstrates a commitment that a large country such as yours is committed to partnering with a small country such as ours. And in the international community, of course, we recognize that no matter how large or how small our voices are the same. And that is what is critical. And we continue to pledge our commitment and our support to the Republic of Indonesia, the government and its people, and certainly to this relationship. And we look forward, Excellency and Honorary Council, to continuing to build upon the very solid foundation that I think we have formed here today. So thank you, God bless you, and may God continue to bless and prosper our efforts as we build this relationship for posterity. Thank you.